Our next speaker is my dear friend of many good years, Jonathan Parr of Foster and Partners. Jonathan has more than 30 years of project experience, working extensively in Asia on signature airports, complex mixed use infrastructure, high-end residential offices, and luxury hotels. Jonathan, the stage is yours. Hello, and uh, thank you, Dr. Hussain. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, when Hussain and I talked about doing this talk, I thought what would be interesting is to share a project which in many ways sums up a lot of the challenges that architects and designers have over their careers, and that is dealing with, dealing with time and trying to design something which is, is timeless. The, the project which I'm going to share with you today in, in the city of the new city of Lusail, which is slightly to the north of Doha, is one which in many ways is part of our foster family of unique designs that are truly located in their, in their place, inspired by sometimes the client itself, often the location, and in this particular case, by the climate. The, the images that I'm showing you here are not specific in my choice of foster projects, but what they do show is that each and every one of them is unique. They're all different. And that's something which we're incredibly proud of and something which with each project is a, is a constant but highly rewarding challenge. Some of them are perhaps more well known to some of you viewers. Uh, the Apple campus at the top left is, is very much a world icon. And for those who have traveled into China pre-COVID, you would have entered into our fabulous Beijing airport um, scheme. For Lusail, Lusail was a vision for a city. It is a vision for a city, which has made a huge impact on the existing town of Doha. And as we all know, any of you who have traveled and worked in the Middle East, that the rate of progress there is, is truly phenomenal. And these images which I'm sharing now are very much a, uh, an embodiment of that. The, the two photographs at the bottom, which are separated probably by something in the order of just a decade or so, show this unbelievable growth in a fantastic city. For us, the project started in 2006, when we were asked to create a vision for a new city, the new city of Lusail. It was an amazing challenge because in, in all honesty, we didn't really have a terribly defined brief. Lucille was to be the centerpiece of a new governmental city. It needed a landmark on a city scale, but to us, it was also very important that we created places for people, spaces, places, creating a real human destination. Between 2006 and today, a great deal has happened. This was a visualization which we produced back in those early days which was for four twisting forms that would herald the end of a grand boulevard that would link the World Cup Stadium, should Qatar win, to our scheme at the head of it. It also was an intersection with major metro rail systems. The project was very much grounded in looking at a, a humanistic scale at the grandscape, at the ground level and a complementary physical entity that would be visible on the skyline. So the three diagrams here very much summed up the orientation of the towers, that at the base they would face one another and begin to define a space. They would then create a central heart and that each one would have its own individual landscape drop off. But by the time, if you look at the right hand diagram, by the time the towers had twisted to their ultimate height, that they would face away from one another. So the orientation was a key driver and that overlooking between the towers was minimized. The issue was that between those early days and almost where we are now, a whole host of other twisting form towers came into being. 
So our original idea, which dated all of these, predated all of these, was something which we thought would need to be questioned. And the reason why I'm saying that a passage of time occurred, that between 2006 and between the time when Qatar announced its successful bid for the World Cup, about 15 or so years had passed. So with the awarding of the World Cup, the need for these towers for the sale became even more pressing. So we were re-engaged by the client to realize that early concept. For us, it was an opportunity to then bring in our new or further developed sense of integrated design within the practice. So design development that we would undertake was then to be married between architecture, engineering, every discipline of engineering, landscaping, project management, acoustics, absolutely every discipline, but with a very key focus on sustainability. And also bearing in mind by this stage that we've been successful in securing the design works for the, the stadium itself at the tail end of the boulevard, which I mentioned earlier. So our projects really did highlight the beginning and end of a ceremonial route, but we had a very short space in which time to, in which time to develop the design because the World Cup obviously was upon us in 2022. And as I sit here recording this today, I have just returned from site and we have less than five weeks to go. Another main difference between the original concept and the final vision was that originally we had one client, but when we picked up our pens again to deliver the final works, we had four. So managing the aspirations of those five clients, four clients, beg your pardon, within one overall vision was quite a rewarding, but quite a challenge. We also had to deal with a much more realistically defined construction budget, and we also had a much more defined time scale. The images I'm showing you now on the left hand side, this was the original twisting design, which had a whole number of pros and cons. And on the right is our ultimate scheme, which we refer to as the Morse scheme, which also had a series of pros and cons. But overall, we felt that the Morse scheme was much more buildable, um, ultimately quicker and cheaper to build, but had a number of key advantages in terms of construction. But also importantly, we felt it could be realized in the time which we were afforded. And it's about this design that I'd like to share more details. The basic twisting form had certain limitations in the amount that the building could actually rotate as it ascended. The structure you see here was our early, very high level concept structural system a network of diagonal members, all of which contributed to, because they were external, a shading solution. Our final scheme, which we have built today, this morph scheme, is about simplifying the structure, but still retains the key drivers of creating a heart at the base, rotating the towers so they face away from one another, and creating a landmark that is visible from a distance but together with the podium buildings which are those small cubes that you can see at the base of the towers really creates a true place now integrated completely with the lrt system and addressing the grand plaza which is in front of the corniche which links lucille north and south to its neighbors In, in detail, looking at one of the towers, as with all projects, there were design changes. And another key component of our integrated team was the ability to, to absorb change. The client was very much keen on taking the original concept as far as possible, but we all knew that as the design developed, there would be the need for changes. So within our office, within our team of highly talented scriptwriters, we developed our own system of communication between the various disciplines so that when design changes did happen, as they inevitably and often really must do, we were able to respond in a super quick period of time. 
that was something which I think allowed us to deliver the project in a in a way which probably in the original days of the first concept we probably wouldn't have been able to do. So it's interesting how time has passed and our skill sets have increased, allowing us to deliver the original vision, but in an even better way. We were, as I say, responsible for all matters of engineering and our structural teams were given a number of challenges and one of which was to work with the with the local construction capabilities of the country. Steel as a building material is not something which is terribly common in Qatar. Concrete is, is by far the, cho the normal chosen material. But we felt that for 70 story buildings, which is what the tall ones eventually settled at, that steel was the correct solution. It is a composite series of uh, structural elements and is married to a, a very impressive, a very extensive basement system and is, uh, in terms of the four towers, they are supported by these low level podium buildings supported in so much as support services. This diagram here explains how the centre core is diminishing in footprint as it arises, as it has less sort of work to do and is linked via outrigger systems to belt trusses through the columns to form this overall skeleton, which allows the building to morph. And it morphs a full 90 degrees, which is an improvement over the original concept scheme, which was only something like 30 to 40 degrees. So the point I was making earlier is that this simplified system actually allows us to realize the original concept even more strongly. You would expect, and indeed we did, do a whole number of wind tunnel tests. This was where the design of the facade system, which in many ways is the inspiration behind the project, where these two components had to be, had to be married. The facade system is one which is completely influenced by climate. The gentle texture, this scrolling that works its way up the face of the towers, is all about protecting the glass that allows a controlled amount of daylight, protecting it from the sun so that energy consumption is minimized because energy gains within the building are minimized. What was interesting was that the undulating texture of the towers had a, had a benefit which we hadn't anticipated, and that was that its rough texture broke up the wind pattern, so therefore reducing wind loading, which was um, an interesting phenomenon, which uh, was something which we then exploited because we then tried to increase the projection of this, this texture to further reduce the, the wind loading. You'll notice also that this texture wraps over the top of the towers because as four objects, they were always seen as four pieces of sculpture and the lower towers are visible from the upper towers. So it, the fifth elevation is incredibly important to maintain a consistency. And as the flight path into Doha passes by these towers, in fact, all four roofs would be visible from any landing or departing aircraft. A few diagrams here to show how the level of design development, we ultimately went for a design and build contract, but as a team, we were conscious that in order to secure a, a realistic price, but also give the contractor as much information as possible to begin with, we would have to do a lot of work, perhaps beyond a design build scenario, in order to make sure that what was to be realized was the most cost effective possible. The facade itself, as I say, is a one which is self shading. The green profile that you see here is a projecting cladding element finished in a natural marine grade aluminium, which has the task of shading the glass to its right as you look at this image here. And over the design development period, we were experimenting with different proportions of glass to solid and indeed a slightly different profile to this shading element. And it's the one on the right, which we finally adopted, which 
has the benefit of increasing the proportion of solid which is visible when you look at the towers and therefore decreasing the amount of glazing. So from many angles, the towers look almost solid in form, which is something which we're incredibly, we're incredibly delighted to see because there are so many all glass towers around the world and in these extreme climates they seem to make very little sense so this for us was a real passion that sustainability and that working with climate as a driver should be embodied in the final design which is the point i was making at the beginning that all of our products around the world are inspired by clients or locations so that they become completely unique and this was how we ensured that the Lucelle towers would do that for Doha. Another small short sequence here is also to explain how geometrically the plan forms changed, but during the design development, we wanted to maximize repetition wherever possible with the geometry of the facades. There are a very small proportion of truly curved glass panels within the facade. There is a great proportion of glass which is cold bent and there is a dominant part which is flat. All of the aluminium fins are made up of flat sheets so a great deal of thought and care was undertaken by our team to ensure that that's that balance of of time and money would mean that the client's budget was spelt, spent wisely. This would also mean that we would investigate mock-ups at full scale, full size scale. The image on the left is a, a very early mock-up with myself and a colleague, Mark Atkinson, inspecting the works, which is more about the, the proportion of solid to glass. The client was a little concerned in the early days that these projecting fins could restrict the views. But once the full-size mock-up was assembled, they, they understood the passion that we had and, and agreed that it was, it was the right thing to do. We also, and the three images on the right will show you, we also had to satisfy people that this technology of coal bending, which is not new, nor especially revolutionary, but it's something which many clients have never come across. So with the, the chosen fabrication company, a Doha-based company, with them, we demonstrated to the whole client team that uh, cold bending could be done to most of the panels, as I say, leaving just one or two that had to be traditionally curved by heat. Which brought us to a employer's requirements of the deliverables and a series of visualizations um, at the end of a very intensive design period. So here you see the four towers. This is a view looking up the boulevard with looking towards the east with um, with visuals which we thought would be as realistic as possible. And we, we very much wanted this shimmering texture, this shimmering sensation for the towers. What was amazing was that fast forward a number of years, this is the reality and I think we got it right. The there are it's an interesting shot because you can you'll see that all of the shading runs one way, which is exactly what science would tell you that the sun moves around the project in one way. But as the scheme is so symmetrical based on the boulevard, there was a moment when we wondered whether perhaps the, the shading should be mirrored because it's it's a formal composition, but science and working with the climate was always the strongest driver. So what you see here is, is the right decision so that all towers are equally self-shaded. That shading is creating amazing spaces within the tower. So in terms of designing a project from the inside out, we were always mindful of that. So textures on certain wall materials that you can see on the right, this terracotta paneling is also echoing the, the projecting thin form and creating these amazing corridor spaces where the sunlight changing throughout the day casts beautiful shadows on walls and floors alike. That texture is taken down to ground level so that the, the veil, if you like, is completely enveloping from top to bottom and gives these gentle 
glimpses into the the main lobbies between the fins set amongst landscaped individual courtyards which i mentioned at the beginning there's a quite a human scale to these these tremendously tall towers and the texture this is a image that we took just a few weeks ago that this texture which is uh very much a part of the shading design you can see how it deals with the curved corners and how it wraps over the top of the tower so that it truly is a is an all-encompassing skin equal in size in terms of gfa to the towers are the podium buildings the podium buildings were inspired by qatari architecture to create human spaces wonderfully shaded and navigable throughout the year. This was an early visualization, which was about creating walkable spaces, human in scale, inspired by Qatari architecture, to contrast with the tower. But both components, the towers and the podiums, are designed with the environment in mind. And that's why you see a limited number of deeply recessed and self-shaded windows. In terms of the technology, something which we're also very passionate about and highly respected for, we investigated ultra high performance concrete, which has fantastic thermal properties, is lightweight and achieves a wonderful balance between a solid heavy facade that doesn't impose greatly on the structure of the podium buildings. So with local contracting companies, we did many experiments to push this material as far as we could in terms of its technological abilities and also its its tone. The white color that you see there is the natural cell finish of the panel. So it's highly durable and minimal in long-term maintenance. The street image, which I've just showed you, has a, a concept of, of a number of blocks and an entrance sequence, which is very much inspired by the local architectural ideas that a landscape courtyard is at the heart of a traditional house. We developed themes of varying roof levels to create multiple decks from which people could view the outside world from within the buildings. And each cluster divided into nine was then further developed with facades projecting, sometimes recessed from one another to afford views up and down the streets. It's very much a, a humanistic approach to creating spaces. And that was incredibly important to us, both daytime and nighttime. The podium buildings are all entered by a, a low level courtyard. So there's a traditional way of entering buildings from a shaded central space that leads into the actual accommodation itself these will be delightfully landscaped small amounts of water features and form a creator a, a formal entrance into the, the podium buildings themselves the typical glass box was absolutely not what we would use for the form of the podium buildings they were always in the very very early conversations to be as solid as possible perhaps with a limited number of roof terraces which would be heavily shaded minimal daylighting that would come through a system of windows but to only have something in the order of 20 to 30 percent of glazing so something quite different but absolutely inspired by the climate. The shaded roofs would then afford views over the towers and the landscape and beyond, and they would in themselves be landscapes. The ultra high performance concrete providing a finish to external walls, internal walls and soffits. So a completely, um, a continuous surface to wrap around and throughout buildings, giving a real sense of integrity to the design. The landscaping itself was very much to be using as many drought resistant species as possible, 
to allow that landscape to contribute to shaded spaces. Qatar does have, as you would expect, a hard, a, a hot climate for many months of the year. But if you were to travel there now, and I, as I say, I was there last week, it's 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 lovely. There is a real range in in temperature and humidity. But this landscaping was all about trying to make the spaces habitable throughout the year. And these, as I close, these shots that were taken over these last few weeks, the landscaping is is very well established. The project is rapidly being prepared to be uh, part of the host series of celebrations for the World Cup. The the spaces are providing that that sense of, I suppose, of community. Really, they they really will be uh, places for people to enjoy this this new city of Lusail. There's a mixture of a formal central boulevard with the individual entrances, the towers to the left and to the right. The streets, which are nearing completion. This you can see here in this picture, the, the system of the ultra high performance concrete being applied to these podium buildings. The overhanging form of the podium buildings is all about shading these streets and they are as narrow as we could possibly make them when considering uh, emergency vehicle access and so on. So we're very happy that the, the, the vision that we had all those years ago for this, this city of Lusail is, is now reaching a conclusion. And lighting is also finally now being able to be tested. We always had an aspiration that the four towers would form a sculptural composition. It's not about a single building, it's about a unique collection of, of four forms. The need to display graphics and different color themes is being experimented upon as I give this talk. It's a constant um, development, but we're very happy with the way in which this lighting is achieved. It's projected lighting as opposed to LEDs within the facades. So the, the shadows that give the eye the reassurance that it is a, a curved form is, is very much a deliberate design intention. Which leads me to my closing slide, which is uh, how the towers were envisaged all those years ago as a, as a punctuation point to a, a grand boulevard. And this is the reality of the project as I make this talk and you can see how the shimmering form that I mentioned at the beginning is very much a, a part of the, the expression of the towers, the deep shading. And in fact, this view here is one of those where the towers almost look completely solid. And at the base, hopefully you can make out those low level podium buildings, which are part of the, the gift to the city. So thank you for listening. I hope that was informative and I look forward to any questions you may have. Thank you.